Hello and welcome back. It took a long time, but I'm finally back with another game review. This time I'm covering the standout RPG of the 2010s, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Skyrim was originally released by Bethesda in 2011, and it received three DLCs and a handful of re-releases on many different platforms. Skyrim took things that many RPGs used to change the gaming market, and expanded on them to create a masterpiece of a game that, despite the few bugs remain, it remains extremely popular today despite its age, averaging 25,000 players on a single player game, which is very impressive. There isn't any doubt in my mind as to why. The player choice, the open world exploration, the narrative depth, the character customization, and the modding are all unrivaled to this day, with few games landing close in each category. Elden Ring and Baldur's Gate 3 come close with their massive open world, incredible storytelling, and excellent character customization, but the world feels dead compared to Skyrim, where random NPC encounters are common and not clearly set, where you learn the world not just through quests and dialogue, but through books and the environment, and where the character customization truly feels limitless. Let's start with the open world of Skyrim. Right after the introduction and tutorial of the game, you were to escape the menacing clutches of Alduin, the game's primary antagonist, you were thrown out into the open world with a quest to go to Whiterun and talk with the Earl Balgruff. The beauty of Skyrim, however, lies in the boundless freedom it offers. You're not tethered to the main quest, instead you're free to wander and explore to your heart's content. There are nine capital cities throughout Skyrim, most of which have quests exclusive to that city, where you can either help it to gain favor, or make it worse depending on your choices. Outside of the capital cities, there are a multitude of towns, caves, dragon lavers, dwarven ruins, bandit camps, castles, and more to explore. The most memorable ones to me were Cheerpoint, a dragon lair where you get the mass of Chrysosis, which buffs your archery by 20 points, and Fort Greymoor, which is originally taken by bandits, until you clear them out and the Imperials take over, which imbues the world with a dynamic, ever-evolving sense of realism. Skyrim excels in ensuring that its dungeons never succumb to monotony. Despite their sheer number, each one is a distinctive labyrinth, enveloping you in unique themes and atmospheres that invoke a sense of awe and intrigue. The world itself is a veritable tapestry of landscapes, allowing you to seamlessly transition from murky marshlands to frigid mountain passes and the non divergent sun-kissed plains, all within the span of a few quests. Skyrim's brilliance lies in the diversity and depth of its world, offering an endless tapestry of adventure, discovery, and wonder at every turn. Skyrim stands as a paragon among RPGs, a veritable realm where the power to craft your own destiny lies firmly in your hands. This unparalleled sense of agency is vividly evident in your pivotal engagements with two monumental quests, the Civil War quest and the main quest. Within these epic narratives, you wield the mantle of Decision Maker, sculpting the very fabric of the game world. The main quest has you make several choices that impact the game. The first notable one is where you negotiate a peace treaty between the Imperials and the Stormcloaks. You can favor one side or the other when brokering a treaty or try to keep it fair. In one of the demands, you have to give up a major hold, and upon the quest completion, you can actually see that whoever you gave the city to has taken over and killed the guards. In the Civil War narrative, you're thrust into a, the crucible of loyalty, choosing to align yourself with either the Imperials or the Feverant Stormcloaks. Through a series of quests, you wage a relentless campaign to capture and control the holds, dismantling the adversary's stronghold, culminating in the dramatic capture of their capital. But outside of overarching impacts certain quests have in the world, how you interact with important NPCs is also up to you. The spectrum is vast, from fostering harmonious relationships with all, to adopting an aggressive stance, ready to engage in combat at the drop of a hat. This is most obvious in the Forsworn questline in the ancient city of Markar, where after you get framed for murder, you can help the Forsworn escape or go full murder hobo and just kill everyone. In the realm of Skyrim, the reins of fate are firmly grasped by the player, forging a truly unique and immersive experience where every decision resonates and your path is yours to define. 
The quests of Skyrim are mostly unimportant to the main story, outside of the main quest, naturally, the Civil War quest, and main DLC quests. That doesn't mean the side quests are insignificant, because they do expand the lore of Skyrim with the many diverse people that you will meet and get quests from. Among the most intriguing to me are the quest entwined with the Daedric Artifacts, an odyssey that leads you to encounter the enigmatic Daedic Princes. These godlike entities task you with quests that serve to amplify their influence in Skyrim, the ultimate reward being the acquisition of a potent Daedric Artifact imbued with arcane might. Other quests will see you help a kidnapped woman, or help an explorer avenge his comrades who are killed by a bear. Some even have you join factions like the Companions, or the Dark Brotherhood, which will then have you ascend the ranks. These affiliations grant you not only a sense of belonging in the world, but also a haven to call your own, with opportunities for smaller yet meaningful side quests that bolster the standing and influence of your chosen faction. In the end, the quest of Skyrim may diverge from the grandiose sweep of the main quest, yet they collectively craft a narrative mosaic that is as vibrant and essential as the very heart of the realm itself, beckoning you to explore, to experience, and to immerse yourself in the boundless lore and the captivating land. Character progression and customization in Skyrim follows a familiar RPG pattern Yet its execution sets apart in a distinctive way. The first and only major choice when it comes to customization is choosing your race, which allows you to change your appearance and it gives you a unique effect and power for each race. I chose the Breton, which gave me 15% magic resistance and the dragon skin ability, which allowed me to absorb magicka from any spell I get hit by. Interestingly, I rarely found the occasion to employ the absorbing prowess, and the magic resistance was undeniably valuable, but it maintained a subtle presence, strikingly well-balanced chord in the grand scheme of gameplay. Outside of the race, you have a fairly standard level system, which, upon gaining a level, allows you to increase your health, stamina, or magicka, and gains you a skill point to use on a skill tree. Speaking of skills, Skyrim takes a different approach to leveling skills. Where you both need to have a skill point from just leveling up, and a high enough skill level in the specific skill you want to upgrade. You can level up your skills by using traits upgraded by the skill, like lock picking or archery. Once you have a high enough skill level and a skill point, you can unlock or upgrade a perk that relates to that skill tree. In my personal journey, which centered primarily around archery, I concentrated my efforts on the archery skill tree, diligently unlocking every available perk. This strategic focus yielded a formidable archer, and my mastery of the bow became a force to be reckoned with, a testament to the depth of customization and progression that Skyrim offers to its interpret adventurers. Skyrim's visual splendor was without a doubt, a revelation in the gaming world of 2011, setting a new benchmark for breathtaking landscapes and intricate details. It stood shoulder to shoulder with other AAA title titans of the time, with only Batman Arkham City daring to challenge its visual prowess. It's not 2011 anymore, and Skyrim is far from the best looking game out there. The graphics have aged all right, Certainly better than Assassin's Creed Brotherhood or Dark Souls, which also released in 2011. Although I would say that Dark Souls has a better artistic direction, which helps its visuals age a little bit better. While it may not boast the cutting edge allure of modern AAA titles, Skyrim's visuals find rejuvenation in the passionate support of its modding community. These dedicated individuals breathe fresh life into the game's aesthetics, injecting it with newfound vibrancy that can rival, and sometimes even surpass, the most current gaming spectacles. Though I refrained from utilizing mods in my recent playthrough, with the knowledge that Skyrim can ascend to the graphical heights of contemporary AAA games through these modifications is a testament to the game's enduring legacy. 
On the other end of the spectrum lies Skyrim's audio design, a facet of the game that has aged like a fine vintage. Although the voice acting can be stiff at times, the music and ambient audio is still very good. These auditory elements remain a testament to Skyrim's enduring quality, reminding us that even in the ever-evolving landscape of gaming, some experiences truly stand the test of time. Now, for the story. The main quest is fairly short, but that doesn't take away from the depth of its story, nor does it detract from the world that Bethesda has built. After escaping Helgen during a dragon attack, where you were to be executed by the Imperials, you make your way to Riverwood, where you are greeted by the friendly locals, and get told to warn the Jarl Bulgruf in Whiterun about the dragon attack. The Jarl, recognizing your unique destiny, entrusts you with a mission of unraveling the mysterious mysteries surrounding these enigmatic creatures. He has you talk to his court sorcerer. After completing a task for the sorcerer, you return to Balgruf and he instructs you to help his men defend a guard tower from a dragon. Afterward, you are summoned by an ancient group of sorcerers who call themselves the Greybeards. And yeah, after meeting them, they live up to the name. These guys are all like 90 years old. Don't let that fool you though. The Greybeards practice magic by speaking dragon shouts. Having absorbed the soul of a vanquished dragon, you earn the title of Dragonborn and the ability to harness the power of dragon shouts through the sheer force of your voice. The Greybeards impart their wisdom and teach you the secrets of these mystical shouts. After teaching you a few useful shouts, they tell you to find the horn of Jurgen Windcaller. And upon finding a tomb, you find the horn stolen. You eventually track down the missing horn to the innkeeper at Riverwood. The innkeeper is called Delphine, and she is a member of the Blades, a group of dragon hunters. You then go on a quest to kill a dragon to prove that you are dragonborn, and then she has you infiltrate a group of racist elves to find information because Delphine is convinced they are the ones behind the dragon attacks. Well, instead of dragon culprits, you stumble upon their pursuit of a fellow blade. Your mission now takes you to Riften, where you seek out Esbern, an elder blade. With both Delphine and Esbern actively combating the dragon menace, your journey to the heart of the blade's fortress, Skyhaven Temple, and discover Alduin's Wall, a prophetic mural predicting the dragon's return. To decipher the secrets of the Elder Scroll, you seek counsel from Parthenax, the leader of the Greybeards, who directs you to explore Dwemir ruins and discover Blackreach, where the scroll resides. Reading the Elder Scroll at the location of Alduin's first defeat, you beckon the wrath of the malevolent dragon. A cinematic battle unfolds between Alduin and Parthenax, with you leaping into the fray to assist your venerable ally. After the fight ends in a draw, you seek out Alduin's right-hand dragon, Odaving, in order to force him to take you to Alduin. You ask your old Bulgra for the help, but unfortunately he will only help if the Imperials and Stormcloats get off his back. So you end up having to broker a peace deal between them. After successfully capturing Odaving and compelling him to transport you to Alduin's temple, your journey leads you to Sovngarde, the ethereal realm of the afterlife. There you rally the spirits of three ancient heroes to aid you in your final battle against Alduin. This story, while not the lengthiest, offers a profound sense of depth and history to the world, seamlessly weaving past and present into a tapestry of intrigue and adventure. Now, we come to the pivotal question. Is Skyrim still a worthwhile adventure in 2023? Without a shadow of a doubt, my answer is a resounding yes. This timeless epic continues to shine brightly, offering an enhancing narrative that has stood the test of time. While its visuals may no longer be at the forefront, the magic of modding allows you to elevate them to the standards of today's AAA releases, should you desire. The quests are unique and don't feel bloated, unlike modern open world games. I'm looking at you, Ubisoft. The combat is a little dated, but as we've seen from games like Elden Ring, that doesn't matter as much as long as it remains fun. The character progression still feels rewarding and is certainly better than AAA games like Diablo 4. The world feels alive, which no RPG game has seemed to really accomplish outside of Skyrim. 
In conclusion, Skyrim is not merely a game. It's an enduring masterpiece that continues to captivate and enhance, offering a timeless adventure that beckons you to explore its wonderful steps in 2023 and beyond. And let's not forget the three DLCs that further enrich Skyrim's experience. How do those hold up? The first DLC released for Skyrim was Dawnguard, a DLC that was centered around vampires and vampire hunters. While the core combat mechanics remained consistent with the base game, Dawnguard introduced notable additions such as crossbows and the transformative power of becoming a vampire lord. However, it's the narrative of Dawnguard that truly shines, eclipsing even the base game in terms of storytelling richness. The main quest of Dawnguard starts when you join the Dawnguard, hence the name of the DLC. A rundown group of vampire hunters living on the edge of Skyrim in a large fort. You are then tasked by the leader of the Dawnguard, Isran, to find out what the vampires in Skyrim are seeking. Your quest takes an unexpected turn when you stumble upon Serana, a vampire trapped within a crypt you are exploring. Her appeal for a safe passage to her father's castle unravels a tale of ancient bloodlines and dark desires. Her father, Parkron, extends an offer for you to become a vampire, a choice that steers the narrative in two distinct directions. You can either accept or decline, and this choice gives you two quests which depend on your choice. I chose not to become a vampire, and so I stayed with the Dawnguard. So that is the story we will continue down. When we return to the Dawnguard castle, Isran tasks us with recruiting two former vampire hunters to help us against the rising threat of Harkon. Upon the task completion, Serana rejoins you and tells you a prophecy called the Tyranny of the Sun. When Isran learns of this, he tasks you with finding a moth priest to read the Elder Scroll Serana has. When you find the Moth Priest and bring him back to the Dawnguard, he reveals to you that he actually needs three Elder Scrolls. Thankfully, you already have two, one being Serana's, and the other being the one you need to defeat Alduin. In order to find the last Elder Scroll, you need to go to the Soul Karan, which is a realm of undead and souls. There you meet Serana's mother, who fled from Harkon long ago, and took the final Elder Scroll you are looking for. You need to release a soul barrier and defeat a dragon guardian to convince Serana's mother that you don't intend to give the Elder Scroll to Harkon, and upon the dragon's defeat, she gives you the final scroll. Returning to the Dawn Guard, you find the Moth Priest blinded, which obviously means he can't read the Elder Scrolls for you, which leads you to the Ancestor Glade, where you read the three Elder Scrolls yourself. A race against time ensues as you strive to acquire a elven bow before Harkon can taint the sun. Upon getting the elven bow, you, Serana, and Isran lead a force of Dawnguard Ben to take and capture Harkon's castle, as well as kill Harkon with Serana. Harkon is a really fun boss fight and reminds me a lot of the Oryx boss fight in the Regicide mission in the original Destiny game. He flies around the arena, casting magic and summoning his fodder enemies, and you have to hit him while he is weak. And since I was an Elcher, the elven bow you get will hit like a truck against him, although he still took a while to kill. After Harkon is defeated, you can ask Serana if she wants to be cured of her vampirism, and she takes off for a little bit to find a cure. Much like the base game, Dongar's visuals may show their age, but the meticulous sound design continues to impress. The open world of Skyrim is expanded a bit with a few new locations, but otherwise it's the same as the base game map. In summary, Dawnguard is a compelling chapter in Skyrim's enduring legacy, offering a gripping narrative, memorable characters, and exhilarating battles. Even in 2023, it remains a worthy addition to any adventure's journey through the realm of Skyrim. And of course, if you have the Special Edition, which is a remastered and re-released version of Skyrim, it comes with all of the DLCs for you. The second DLC installment for Skyrim, Hearthfire, took a unique departure from the traditional formula of Skyrim by introducing a feature dedicated solely to home debt customization without any substantial impact in core gameplay. This expansion allowed players to unleash their creativity 
building and personalizing their dream homes in Skyrim, offering a welcome break from the rigors of adventures and dragon slaying. That brings us to the last DLC, Dragonborn. Dragonborn starts with Solstein assassins trying to shank you for their cult leader. Your quest to unmask this sinister figure leads you to Solstein, a mysterious island shrouded in secrets. Upon your arrival, you discover that the leader is known only as Mirak. His identity is veiled in a fog of forgotten memories. You then explore Solstein and find the temporal Mirak and Freya, a shaman of the local people Mirak has been mind controlling. While exploring the temple, you find a mysterious black book that brings you face to face with Mirak, who reveals himself as Dragonborn. Emerging from the temple with Freya by your side, your mission crystallizes. To liberate her people from the clutches of Mirak's malevolent control, you learned the Bend Will Shout to destroy all the marker stones across Solstein, which is helping Mirak mind control its inhabitants. After doing so, you learn that you need to find more black books to stop Mirak, and to find them you travel into a Dwemi ruin with a dark elf wizard who is studying these black books. Reading these black books brings the attention of Hermaeus Mora, the Daedic Prince of Knowledge, as you need to enter his realm of Apotheca when reading them. Hermaeus Mora gives you the final words of Bend Will, so that you can defeat Mirak and take his place as Hermaeus Mora's servant. The climactic showdown with Mirak unfolds with you employing all your newfound knowledge and abilities to face down this mad dragonborn who has succumbed to the seductive allure of power. The battle against Mirak proves to be a formidable challenge, given his staggering damage output and his ability to regenerate health multiple times from killing dragons. Ultimately, Hermaeus Mora intervenes, claiming Mirak's life for himself as he discerns Mirak's treacherous intentions. This DLC was pretty short, but offered a completely different map than Skyrim or Dawnguard had. Moreover, it delivered a thrilling and memorable boss battle, and immersed players in the surreal and eerie world of Apothecaria, leaving an indelible mark on the Skyrim experience. Skyrim's DLC have left an unforgettable mark on the rich tapestry of the game's universe. Dawnguard, with its enthralling narrative and memorable characters, Prove that storytelling can shine even brighter than the base game. The choice servant journey through the world of vampires and vampire hunters offered a unique perspective on the Skyrim universe. Hearthfire, while diverging from the additional action-packed gameplay, allowed players to indulge their creativity in crafting their own houses. Finally, Dragonborn whisked players away to the enigmatic island of Solstein, introducing an intriguing story filled with mystery and darkness. The battle against Mirak and the exploration of the bizarre realm of Apotheca offered a fitting climax to the Skyrim experience, even if it was relatively short. The expansion expanded the horizons of Skyrim's world and delivered an unforgettable boss battle that added yet another layer of depth to the game. In 2023, these DLCs continue to offer compelling adventures within the expansive world of Skyrim proving that even as time marches on, the legacy of this beloved RPG remains as vibrant as ever, backing new and returning adventurers to immerse themselves in captivating stories and immersive landscapes. Skyrim and its DLCs stand as a testament to the enduring appeal of a well-crafted, open-world RPG that just transcends the boundaries of time. In conclusion, revisiting the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim and 2023 is a testament to the enduring brilliance of this iconic RPG. Despite the passage of time, Skyrim continues to shine brightly, offering a gaming experience that stands head and shoulders above many modern titles. From its expansive open world, filled with diverse landscapes and endless exploration, to its intricate quests that are both captivating and enriching, Skyrim remains an RPG masterpiece. The game's character customization and progression systems, while following a familiar RPG pattern, still manage to provide a rewarding and encouraging experience. The ability to shape your character and make choices that impact the world around you showcases the game's commitment to player agency and storytelling. The visuals may have aged, but thanks to the dedicated modding community, Skyrim can be brought to AAA standards. The audio design, including the atmospheric music and sound effects, continues to impress and immerse players in its world. The main story, though not the longest, 
weaves a tapestry of intrigue and adventure that is both profound and captivating. It effortlessly melds the past and present to create a narrative mosaic that enriches the game world. Furthermore, the three DLC expansions, Dawn Guard, Hearthfire, and Dragonborn, have all left an indelible mark on Skyrim's universe. Each offers a unique experience, from the enthralling narrative of the Dawn Guard to the creative freedom of home customization in Hearthfire and the mysterious world of Solstheim in Dragonborn. These expansions add depth and variety to an already rich gaming experience. In 2023, Skyrim and its DLCs remain an essential play for both newcomers and veterans. They serve as a reminder that a well-crafted open-world RPG can stand the test of time, offering an enduring legacy that beckons players to immerse themselves in its captivating stories and expansive landscapes. Skyrim is more than a game. It's a timeless adventure waiting to be explored, cherished, and remembered for years to come.